Hey guys, what's up? It's Yannick. Welcome back to Gasoline Culture. I never thought that I would be saying these words in front of a running camera again, but hey, here we are. One of the only positive sides of COVID-19 was that we had a lot of time to think. I've been watching a lot of YouTube myself and always thinking to myself, God damn it, this could be us. So either way, we're back with a lot of new content for you guys and uh, hopefully going to start off with a bang with the Ferrari GTC for Luso V12. All right, guys, so welcome to the inside of the GTC4 Luso. Now, uh, even though this car has been out for a while, it's very important that we speak about this specific vehicle because it's actually discontinued. Now, there are a lot of people that are quite frustrated in the post-IPO days of Ferrari because, you know, they've really been ramping up production. They have brought out a lot more models as well. Um, and this is one of the cars that got discontinued and will most likely be replaced by the upcoming SUV. So for me personally, as a proper enthusiast, it is very frustrating that uh, Ferrari is bringing out, you know, a lot more models. And I think that the purity of Ferrari as a brand and in the cars themselves is taking a little bit of a hit through, you know, the bean counters that are forcing the brand to put out so many new models. And of course, the emissions regulations have been uh, very, very stringent and prohibiting the brand of uh, putting out cars like this. Okay guys, so before we get on to the performance of this car, let me give you a couple of facts and figures just to get that out of the way. So this car has a 6.3 liter naturally aspirated V12 engine up front with 690 horsepower, PS actually, and 700 newton meters of torque. So very, very big displacement V12, you know, like you're used to from Ferrari. However, not for long. So the thing that I love the most about this car is its true dual personality. So you can just poodle around, drive completely normally. And then when the road opens up, shift down a couple of gears and hit it. Uh, let me talk you through the dynamics of this car. So obviously you do feel the weight in corners, um, but I really like the four wheel steering the four-wheel drive gives you all the grip you need and um, you know you can really power out of corners all the way to the rev limiter wow this is what it's all about this is the engine that you want in your amazing daily driver these are emotions this is ferrari wow yeah so basically you know, the gearbox, when driving faster, it's very responsive. So as you would expect from a dual clutch gearbox, it definitely has that sportiness that you look for in a car like this when pushing along a mountain road, right? Again, you do get a little push from the front axle, but that's normal. I mean, at the end of the day, the car is almost 1800 kilograms and it is to be expected, but surprisingly dynamic in these twisties here. So I love the exterior of this car. I think it's a truly, truly special looking vehicle. It's got such an unusual shape and nothing else looks like it on the road, which, 
you know, to most people, they wouldn't even realize that it's a Ferrari, and that's exactly the point of this car. I'm always super happy when I see one in St. Moritz covered in snow. You know, just the guy who drives it just wants to use it and like puts it through the steps of ownership, right? And you know, you treat it like any other car and it just simply works. So let's talk a little bit about the exterior of this car. So it's really one of the most important things because it's got such a unique look, right? And it's one of those cars where either you really, really like it or you absolutely hate it. I personally love the look of this car. I think it's great looking. The proportions are fantastic. Then again, I've always been a, a fan of the shoe look, right? So this car always reminded me of the BMW Z3 M Coupe, which I always found beautiful as well. So you have a slightly narrower front, which is very wide in itself, going back to a super wide rear with amazing hips. The lines are just stunning. And um, especially the spec of this car. So I think these things are very spec dependent, and this is a perfect example. Um, the exterior is finished in grigio scuro, or grigio scuro, as you would say in Italian. And uh, I really do think that it suits the look of this car. All right, guys, so we just came from a really spirited drive with the car, but I think the first thing I want to talk to you about when talking driving characteristics of the GTC4 Lusso is how it actually does as a daily driver. How does it drive normally? Well, let's just go from sport to comfort on the Manettino, hit auto mode, and just see how it cruises. So just cruising along, you have a seven speed dual clutch gearbox doing its thing, perfectly upshifting and downshifting while you're in auto mode. And it's a very, very nice place to sit just to cruise around, which uh, may come surprisingly to, uh, to some people. But at the end of the day, this is what the car has to be able to do. And it does so very, very well. All right. So just driving through a couple of country roads here that are not necessarily the best in terms of surface, even in Switzerland. I have to say that the car delivers on the comfort front. It's uh, a very, very comfortable ride, super supple. The uh, comfort suspension is doing very, very well. And um, the interesting thing is, is that it's still a sporty setup, right? It's still a sporty car and you do feel everything coming through, which I think is very important on a Ferrari because you don't want to be completely disconnected from the road, right? I'm just coming up to a junction here, also taking a tight turn, you feel the all-wheel steer that this car has, which really shortens the wheelbase, and I actually really like. I didn't think that it would uh, work so well, but it makes the car feel very, very compact and very small. Moving on to the interior of the GTC4 Lusso, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a very, very important part of the car, right? This is the daily driver Ferrari, and to be honest with you, I think it's the one to have. I mean, this is exactly how I imagine a more modern Ferrari interior. I've driven the Roma as well as the SF90, and that's got the latest tech in it, which looks really good, uh, but I'm not too sure on, you know, the electronics and how well they actually work. This car is the perfect mix between, you know, classic instrument dials such as the rev counter in the middle and, you know, modern screens across the cabin like this 10.25 inch screen in the middle that actually has really, really good resolution and works very well to the touch. And of course, another option that everyone seems to appreciate a lot is the passenger display, which um, is really cool because it shows you the speed that you're going, it shows you the revs, etc., etc., just to keep your passenger entertained, right? So evidently I need to show you guys the rear seats, which are, surprisingly spacious actually so just waiting for the seat to move forward getting in and out is not the easiest but perfectly manageable and if I bring the seat back to uh, where it was when I was sitting in the driver's seat you actually have plenty of space for your feet for your knees and it's a beautiful place to be I mean the panoramic roof makes a world's difference so you have a really nice view out into the, the sky, into the surroundings. And it's actually 
a very, very nice place to sit. So this car is a classic Cuyo interior, which I really, really like because it matches the exterior of the car very, very well. So it's super classy and it is exactly how it should be. You know, you can see on the exterior as well as on the interior is this kind of gentleman's spec, which is like a, I would say, a hidden agreement between aficionados and real connoisseurs of the brand. You don't spec a V12 Ferrari with carbon on the outside and you don't spec it with shields. And obviously you have silver wheels along with silver calipers and ultimately you have silver wheel caps as well which finish it off which looks unbelievable. This car has black ones but super nice as well. Um, as you can see here the steering wheel so you either have the full carbon fiber driving zone with the LEDs, which is really cool, right? And you would want the LED steering wheel for that modern touch, that Formula One feel. But then again, you don't want all the carbon everywhere. So this car has a very, very special option done by TaylorMade at the factory. It's the standard steering wheel with the aluminum finish but it still has the LEDs, but wrapped in leather. So no carbon fiber to be seen. I really, really like that touch. So another feature about this interior that I really, really like is actually the panoramic roof. It's a very, very expensive option, but in my opinion, it's an absolute must have. I mean, look at the sheer size of it. It's massive and uh, it really lightens up the cabin uh, while it's not blinding you when you're in straight sunlight. So it's a really, really cool option. And I think that every single GTC4 Lusso should have it. All right, guys, so naturally, I'm gonna have to talk you through the very few things that I don't like about this car. And um, I know this is a thing that a lot of people say, but these indicator buttons, they definitely do still feel like a bit of an afterthought, even after so many years. And of course, you don't have to take your, uh, your hands off the steering wheel when driving. But to be honest, I just still think they're a little bit finicky and it's just not an intuitive movement, right? Especially if you have other cars. Um, it kind of reminds me of those like Porsche paddles that they had a couple of years ago that would be like ergonomically adjusted to your uh, thumb where you could up and down shift by pressing them. It was very, very strange. And uh, Porsche was convinced at the time that this was the, the right way forward. One year later, they came out with a sports steering wheel with normal paddles. So there you go. I still don't think that they're the best to use. You know, it's just not very intuitive if I'm being honest. All right, so another thing that I genuinely think is not amazing on this car are the seats. So interestingly enough, even though it's a sort of comfortable luxury vehicle, the seats have this very hard foam in them. So they're not soft at all. And it's just not the most comfortable seat. So nothing like the seat of an S63 AMG, for example. Um, not saying that it should be, but at the end of the day, this is still a luxury cruiser. And um, also in terms of side bolstering, like they're just not that great. I mean, they hold you in okay, but okay at best. All right, guys, well, that was it from the GTC4 Lusso V12. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, might still be a little bit shaky because it's the first time back in front of the camera after what, three years? But either way, hit the subscribe button for more content. Give us a thumbs up if you can. And uh, yeah, we'll see each other soon. Take care. Bye-bye.